The Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn was a mystical and esoteric society that came into being in 1888, invented by Freemasons, Rosicrucians and Kabbalists that heavily informed and continues influencing Western occultism. Functioning like a school, the Golden Dawn incorporates a fusion of approaches to spiritually, psychically and intellectually advanced humanity. While that is addressed in my introduction to the Golden Dawn, my viewer sees and suggested I examine one of its central myths, namely the one of the fall. Before that, consider subscribing to my channel and newsletter if you find the content valuable and entertaining. Check my books such as my products on Gumroad and Etsy. Also, feel free to support me using the provided in the description links. By supporting me, you also help my work, keeping me improving and growing as a creator. The Fall Myth The Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn didn't have a unified dogma, and as the Ciceros say, there is no one true way to utilize its approaches. On the contrary, while different scholars modified and interpreted things differently, specific concepts remain ubiquitous, and one of them is the myth of the Fall. As my Golden Dawn video remarks, the system employs various religious and mythological symbolism, yet it is not a religion, as it uses those as metaphors for stages and currents in one's life and sphere of being. Like many things Golden Dawn, the myth of the fall draws upon Christianity, Hermeticism and Kabbalah, and its primary idea is that humanity was previously in a state of unity and divinity, but eventually fell into ignorance and separation. The Tree of Life the myth of the fall is best displayed through the Kabbalistic Tree of Life, which is the backbone of all Western occultism and the Golden Dawn. And as my viewers know, the Tree of Life maps how the universe manifests reflected by the human soul. The tree diagram has 10 spheres called Sephiroth. Besides being a divine emanation, each sephira represents an aspect of human experience. The topmost is divinity, whereas the lowest is the physical universe. So the journey between those two is a process of self-realization, enlightenment and growth. A metaphor for human existence The meat and the tree diagram serve as a multi-layered allegory for human existence, given that examining the fall meat calls for touching on the basics of the Sephiroth. Feel free to let me know if you'd like to dive deeper into them. Sephiroth, the Supernal Triad Being the topmost and number one, Keter or the Crown represents undivided unity beyond duality. It is pure being, hence why it is attributed to the name Ehea, which means I am. Hokma wisdom, or number two, associates with the primordial spark of individual consciousness. In Hokma, the was starts recognizing and differentiating itself from the divine source, although it is basically a reflection of it. Bina, or number three, stands for understanding and receptivity. It is where consciousness increases awareness of its individuality and relationship with the source. Called the Supernal Triad, the three topmost Sephiroth function as one unit. Two and three are attributes of one, and all this is likened to Tao and Yin and Yang. Opposites Also called Gedua and Pachat, four and five Hesed and Gibura represent consciousness transitioning from divine unity to duality and opposites. Here consciousness can exercise free will, which in my humble opinion alludes to the fact that Gibura actually represents the universal will expressed through the individual one. Meaning beauty resulting from harmony, different or number six, is where opposites reconcile. Also, where consciousness's soul nature finds balance with the emerging ego or work, but more on that by the end of the video. Struggles and ordeals 7 and 8, Netzak and Hot, Glory and Victory also represent potential struggles and ordeals as now consciousness has to navigate between the spiritual and material realms. Associated with the personal subconscious, including dreams and symbols, number 9 is Hot is regarded as the bridge linking the water to, also as the reconciliation between Netzak and Hot. Getting Dancer the lower it goes, the more entangled in material existence consciousness becomes, and some scholars define that as falling deeper and deeper into sleep, or as having a dream within a dream within another with each subsequent sephira. This culminates in Malkut, the kingdom. Being the lowest, the ten sephira represents the physical universe and material existence. It is where consciousness fully descends into physical limitations and separateness. Great papers and illustrations. The Golden Dawn book introduces the fall myth through the papers of grades Practicus 3 equals 8 and Philosophers 4 equals 7. Attributed to water and the sphere of hot, Practicus is reached through the paths of Shin and Resh from Malkut and Yesod. 
Philosophers is attributed to Netzach and Far and access through the paths of Kof, Tzadi and Pe. And besides this, the Golden Dawn also includes illustrations depicting the Garden of Eden before and after the fall. Before the fall. The first picture depicts the Supernal Triad as the mother Supernal, Emma Elohim, the woman of the apocalypse. Quoted with the sun and having the moon in her feet, she wears a crown of 12 stars. And in my humble opinion, this reinforces the idea that the Supernal Triad operates as one. Under all this fall the lower Sephiroth. Symbolizing good and evil, the tree of knowledge grows from Malkut. It is between the tree of life and the physical reality. And in this first picture, Eve is tempted by the tree of knowledge's fruits. The river Nahir or Nahar has four streams flowing into four of the Sephiroth corresponding to the four elements. Quote, Pison or Pison fire flowing into Geborah where there is gold. Gihon or Gaihan water, the waters of mercy flowing into his head. Haidikel or Hidikel air flowing into Tiferet and Frat earth flowing into Malkut. Unquote. The lowest in the first picture is the seven headed dragon Leviathan, representing seven infernal palaces and the Clifford or shells. After the fall. In the second picture, the Sephirotic tree is pretty disordered. Eve and Adam are fallen, and Leviathan dominates the scene, coiling around Malkut and linking it to the Clifford. Also called the shells, in a nutshell, the water are imbalanced and usually destructive forces, deserving a separate video. In the second picture, the streams of the Nahia river are desecrated, while Leviathan pumps infernal waters through that. To isolate and secure the supernal triad from the mess, Elohim places yod he vav -He above all this. And this also shows the separation of the supernals from the fallen Adam, who is now crucified on the four rivers. A new Adam is required to be born and crucified in the infernal waters. This way he can descend to the lowest and be reborn of Malkut. And this new Adam is expected to break the heads of Leviathan, restoring harmony. Kinda like the heroes in fairy tales. The way of return. There are two ways of return. One is that of the yogi and mystic. Going through a straight line, this follows the spheres of the middle pillar. The second is the magician's way, following the flaming sword and going through all spheres. It is said that the second way incorporates the totality of one's being by dealing with all spheres. Comment. In my opinion, this alludes that the magician wants to appreciate the brightest and darkest parts of their soul as essential elements of their being, and as Telemites would say, as part of the ecstasy of Nuit. Let me know if you agree. Spirit and Matter. It is noteworthy that unlike the Eastern mystic, the Western magician doesn't view matter as evil, but as a different state of spirit, and as the Unfortune says, they are like ice and water, the two forms of the same thing. The Western magician strives to bring the Godhead down, making the divine law prevail in the Kingdom of the Shades, and as noted in the Golden Dawn, Malkut is the synthesis of all other spheres. According to David Shoemaker's Living Telema, Quote, the way of return is the Kabbalistic term for describing the process of reuniting the incarnate human personality with its divine source. Just as the universe and each human being was created in a top-down process descending from Keter, so must each human seek to return to God on an upward path from Malkut. This is an elegant and uniquely Kabbalistic restatement of the physical path common to all esoteric traditions. That is by retracing the process through which we came into being, we may discover the divine nature within us and transcend the limitations of physical existence." Unquote. The fall also symbolizes the mundane day-to-day -day consciousness a person is destined to transcend. It is really one's own limitations and programming one has to overcome, and this is where the various techniques for invocation and meditations come into play. Properly utilized, they expand consciousness, opening the person to their divine nature. Getting your head into the right place. By walking this way and building their magical skills, the practitioner steadily allows their consciousness to re-enter its original state. And as Kabbalists say, enlightenment is all about getting your head into the right place. And this right place is the sphere of the sun, Tiferet. Code 5 equals 6 in terms of Golden Dawn grades, reaching that stage is considered accomplishing the great work. It is a state where the ego or day-to-day -day consciousness Ruach elevates and unites with one's soul or deeper consciousness Neshima. It is called 5 equals 6 because 5, the microcosm, joins with 6, the macrocosm. Also, that's the fifth level of initiation within the Golden Dawn system. 
the stage when the adept is accepted in the inner order. Scholars versed in psychology identified this with Jung's individuation and bringing forth the capital letter self, which attributes to the Neshama in the Kabbalistic system and the AJ in Telima. They both require balancing the aspects of the psyche, which magic and Kabbalah ascribe to the four elements. As Crowley says in 777, paraphrasing, the angel is received after the elements are balanced. Yet, although still the most important, achieving this and going beyond the veil of parochet becomes the first stage in Telima. The second is crossing the abyss, but that deserves a separate post. Comment It is worth mentioning that this experience isn't exclusive to the Golden Dawn or Telima. Instead, it is the birthright of any human being. It is also not necessarily accomplished through ritual or techniques of the Golden Dawn or any other system, though they can help serving as a catalyzer. Suggestions For further insights and alternative perspectives on the foam myth, I suggest exploring different methods and systems. And this includes the fourth ways concept of essence and personality, such as the Setian Kefir and the Path of Remembering. But that's just my opinion. Let me know what yours is, such as your thoughts on this video and the foam myth. Otherwise, like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to the channel and my newsletter for more content. Consider checking my digital products, music and books. Support me with either of the links in the description and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for your time.